Good evening. My name is Neda Seguir. I am majoring in architectural engineering and business. Um, my name is Marissa Gonzalez. I am a freshman here and I'm majoring in mechanical engineering. Hi, I'm Kyle Dunnebeck and I'm majoring in architectural engineering. Okay. So we were all moved after watching this, vid um, this movie. And so what struck us the most was that one billion people do not have fresh water in the world. And two million of those people die every year because the lack of water. And so, what? Yeah, no, sorry. Um, so we thought we'd help to um, solve this problem by looking at uh, ways to purify water and utilize possibly the energy of water and possibly, um, yeah, you want to take it? So we know that water moves around um, the world. We get it from one place to another. So we figured why not utilize the energy from the movement of the water to um, to run certain things, to like we'd utilize that energy for other things depending on the area. And we'd also purify the water as it's moving through these tunnels. And so she is going to speak to you about um, how the plan and how it's going to happen. Uh, first, we're gonna focus on like surveying, surveying different groups to see how high the need is for clean water. Obviously we know it's high, but we wanna get like specific details about it. Um, we're going to search for resources that will be beneficial to the area, that it's, it's also user friendly for them too, and make sure they're renewable resources and not uh, resources that will deplete quick. And then we'll have multiple tests to see how well the purifying system works. Um, and then we'll just keep on testing in various locations around the world to see how well it works in those areas. And we'd have anthropologists study certain areas in those. Um, we'd live with the people and understand what they utilize the water for. And so we can greatly maximize the amount of water they can save, as well as the amount of energy they might, excuse me, they might need. So before we wrap this up, does anyone have any questions? I have a question. Go for it. So your premise is water, water purification for drinking and for watering crops and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But then you're also, your second part is creating energy f through the purification process. Yes. My question is, based on what we saw in the film in terms of the, the red kind of snake that was in, uh, it was, looked like it was in the ocean. Hence, the oceans are always moving and thus creating the, the energy. Um, are you talking about like, kind of the desalination process of taking salt water to purify it to drink, or you're talking about purifying um, water that is not salt-based, that is dirty? Can you so, clear it up? Sure. Um, we apologize if that was unclear. And so since we would be studying the certain areas, we'd know um, areas that are near salt water, we would be able to purify those into pure drinking water. But um, places who do not have clean water, we would change that and make it clean water for them to drink. So it would depend on the area, and our engineers would work specifically with um, the people in need to create different tubing systems for each area. Any other questions before we wrap up? I'd, I'd just like to make a comment that um Pretty good for 15 minutes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, and um, I, I don't quite understand if, if you're going to do uh, water purification or you're going to try and capture energy from moving water. We are actually, or uh, both. Did you want to? Yeah. Uh, we're actually trying to do both at the same time by uh, the movement of water through a purification system can also create energy because most water uh, moving through piping already is moving through pressure. So we would like to utilize the energy created from that pressure and the moving water and also purify it at the same time. Thank you. Thank you.
So in conclusion, we hope that you um, hope to change the lives of multiple people and reduce the amount of people who die. We would like to drastically change that two million people who die each year from lack of water. And okay, thank you so much for your time. Well, hello, my name is Maximilian Neuser. I'm a third year mechanical engineering student. I'm Andrew Barron, first year mechanical engineering student. I am Alex Casa, second year on electric engineering. All right, we have a couple of really great professors here, and one quote that really stuck in my mind was that there's really no solutions, that they're all trade-offs. The other thing he said, there's no free lunch, but that's sometimes a lie. Um, long story short, we were really interested in recycling, because um, we thought about energy at first, and thought that uh, it's going to be localized. It really depends on where you are in terms of region. So we wanted to come up with a solution that could be blanketed, something that could be applied to all situations. Recycling is something that's being done. But I think it's really underutilized. America has huge uh, garbage dumps full of materials, uh, really underutilized. Uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in materials that just go into the trash. I helped with a deconstruction a couple of weeks ago. And alone from looking at that, what can be pulled out of the abandoned homes in Detroit is phenomenal. We got something like seven tons of lumber, like three tons of glass, uh, four tons of concrete. There's many materials that could be reused uh, effectively. And most materials require less energy to recycle than they are required to make fresh. So that's a huge incentive. Not making it only, you know, a good thing for the planet, but also cost effective as a business model. So with that, I'll hand off to my friend here. <laughs> OK, so um, basically our proposal is we want to kind of create a, um, a business that would be able to utilize all the materials that um, have already been created. Um, a lot of the materials that we're getting to make new materials are running out. You know, they're not, they're not renewable. They're non-renewable resources. Even showed in the video that there were huge scars in land from material that people kept using to make the same material that we've already created thousands of times. Um, all this material stuck in a landfill is greater than the material we have left. So by utilizing this, we would not only reduce the amount of energy that's required to create certain products, we'd also increase the amount of products we have and at a lower price. Um, uh, we also wanted to try and make it, so, uh, make it so companies, when they're making products, are aiming towards more um, environmentally, environmentally friendly products, such as uh, we shouldn't be using plastic to make water bottles that are just gonna go, that are one-time use things. Plastic is uh, non-degradable, and it's the, basically the, like the most resilient material that's made, but we're using it for one-time use things. We should be using glass that can be reused over and over again, and plastic for things that we're gonna keep for a long period of time. Um, you wanna? As we all know, what's done is already done. We can't go back and fix anything. So the whole things we have to do is give up a little and sacrifice. For example, instead of using paper, start using technology so we can have less trees cut down every year. That, that can produce a more amount of environmental change in the earth. And the other thing is, like he said, recycling. Recycling have been done already, but nobody's taking it really serious. It's easier for us to just throw it in the garbage than recycling it. But if we have convenience recycling stuff around the school, around everywhere, it could be easier for other students or anybody to recycle things. Anybody? Yeah. So, questions? questions? If you guys have any questions? Yeah, I, I just have uh, one comment that, uh, again, good. Very good for 15 minutes uh, of, of preparation. Um, you, one of the one of the things that uh, is really pronounced in in the use of, of recyclables is to get the people, the, the, the producers that, that make products, 
to get away from the use of virgin, what they call virgin materials, where they got where they got to have brand new stuff every time, and and you can you can get, uh, let's say, 50, 60, 70 percent recyclable material mixed in with the with the virgin, and it makes a a super business proposition for them, right? They, there's almost no degradation in performance, and yet, and yet there's a big re uh, reduction in cost. Something to think about for your business. Thank you. I'm actually from Germany originally, and we have a very widespread recycling program throughout our town and much of other Germany. Um, for example, when people take out their garbage, they actually have like four or five different wheelie bins. You've got one for paper, one for glass, one for a biodegradables, one for plastics, and you know other towns take variations on it. So I've heard a lot of people say, oh, recycling, it's really difficult to do because it has to all be sorted. But if you were to start from the consumer end and have people vastly you know, sort the majority of material, then that cuts down already on the process. And the only real innovation that could come, I think, to the recycling process is doing it on a mechanized scale that allows it to be cost efficient. With that, I don't really see any reason for recycling not to be a real business proposition to be more uh, active in the world. I have a single question. In terms of like commercial viability of encouraging the, the consumer to engage in recycling practices, um, how do you, how does your vision or of your organization how do you tackle that problem in terms of how is it going to be viable um, commercially to either generate necessarily a profit for your entity or for the municipality um, where, where, where does that f factor into your kind of your plan and your vision okay. um, recycling could be made attractive to the consumer by promising them not only uh, lower cost of product due to the decrease in material energy requirements, but also other things could be promised. If municipalities, like you were saying, uh, worked in conjunction with the recycling process, um, city parks might be once again a thing. The last time I saw somebody just walking around a park was years ago. Um, garbage has become a big problem, and everyone's always wondering, you know, where does it go? What happens to it? Instead of burying it and trying to forget about it, I think it's better that we reuse it, come back face to face with it, and see, huh, I recycled this. I think another big point is um, a long time ago, people didn't really dispose of garbage how we do now. It, um, you know, you can't legally, you can't just throw your garbage out in the street and then hope someone comes and take it. Uh, it's up to the city to enforce that you dispose of your garbage properly. And that wasn't done over a day. And I think a similar thing can happen with the movement of recycling. You can't just throw your recycling in the garbage anymore. You have to sort it out, or else you'll get either a fine or something like that. Like, you can't throw your garbage on the ground. Hi, thank you all for coming. Um, my name is Bhavika Patel. I'm a fourth year. I'm a senior in biomedical engineering. I'm Amber Zoki. I'm a sophomore in architectural engineering. I'm Christina Harkevich. I'm a sophomore majoring in electrical engineering. Cutting down trees, not replanting them, not looking at the outcome of it. Deforestation is a huge problem right now, as mentioned in the movie as well. You as a producer, as a company that relies on wood and its resources, plants that, re that you rely on plants, you are looking in 20 years being out of your resource. So we're looking at offering you a solution right now, 20 years ahead of time, as just doing a simple thing as planting a tree. And that could be start locally, then can spread nationally, and can spread globally. Yeah, so in 20 years, you're gonna be out of business. So what do you do? You follow our plan. We want you to make a rule for yourself, to plant two trees for every one you have cut down. Um, we also need to be very selective because eucalyptus trees, as you know, ruin the soil so nothing else can grow. Um, we want these trees to be harvested later, so we need to be selective in how many trees we also cut down. 
we only want to cut down one for every hectare acre. Um, yeah, so. All right, so in doing this, I know it sounds like a lot of different rules to follow, but it's not just following rules. This is a chance for publicity. If you're, if you're only cutting down the trees, I mean, that looks really bad. But, so now we're not just cutting them down, we're cutting one down and we're planting two more. Or just going out in your neighborhood, volunteering a little bit of time just to plant a couple of trees, now that's really good publicity. And if you start out locally in the neighborhood, well now everybody knows you're planting trees, so everybody's gonna go to you. They're gonna be looking to you for your resources because they know that you're giving back. They're trusting you. And it's not just that. You're also looking at your company being around in a couple of years once the trees and resources start being depleted. You're still gonna be there because the resources are gonna be too. So we're offering you a chance to expand your company by starting locally, growing nationally, globally. And you're also looking at the opportunity to be recognized worldwide and get some really good publicity out there. Any questions? It's a little bit more special because you're looking at the company doing it. Right now, some people do it here and there, and as the movie had mentioned, you know, there's a couple of nations. But it's not one specific company or one specific person stepping up saying, oh, hey, let's do this. Because if one company does it, another will. And the more people follow, well, now you're actually growing and expanding rather than everybody trying to mismatch or take a different way. It's one specific thing you can bank on and be proud of as a company. Anybody else? So is the, the crux of, of your pitch, is, is it, if in terms, it's not public shaming, but it's in the sense that it's good publicity if company A engages in tree, uh, into replanting trees. So if it's, good, if it's good publicity for company A if they engage in this practice, are you in a sense, advocating that kind of shaming other companies that don't follow that practice? We're not trying to shame. Not that there's anything wrong with, you know, public shaming of, of corporations. <laughs> no, no, no. We're not trying to shame anybody. We're trying to get others to follow the idea because if it works for one company, you know, it's an opportunity for it to work for another as well. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at giving you guys the first touch and the first ones to grasp on, but hoping that others will follow. So you would be establishing yourself as a leader, and leader, being a leader, others will follow. And it's just not that you will be encouraging other companies to actually give back, because you're a producer, but not just a producer, you're a consumer as well, personally. So you're actually encouraging everybody else to give back because you have taken. And do you foresee this model, if I understand the pitch correctly, it, you were gearing it towards corporations that engage in like the, the lumber trade or wood-based products that they're creating. Is this something that you would take beyond just uh, those type of companies and try to expand your kind of reach beyond um, furniture making or paper making or wood-based products? H how would you do that? And I, I understand the, the connection between if I cut down a tree, I put two more up. But if I don't specialize in wood-based products, how do, you, how do you sell that to me? as a corporation? Well, even like packaging companies, they could look to companies that are selective in their cutting down the trees and deforestation. So if you're, if you're watching what you're doing, you're gonna be more apt to, I guess, get consumers that are on the bandwagon. So, any more to say? Well, it, it can be special, it will be specially geared toward a company that uses lumber. Um, it uses plant on trees for any kind of uh, product. But it would be also geared toward, it can be um, a, sub, um, a sub plan that can be geared toward other companies that can be just volunteer work that you would be giving back. Sounds like. Um you're going to try and influence culture or change culture rather than produce a product. Is, is, yeah. that, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, so you're probably a social enterprise rather than a for-profit uh, type of a company. Yeah, we're trying to encourage companies to be more proactive in the environmental sustainability. Yeah. And okay. awareness, yeah. I think I got it. <laughs> Thank you.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Alex Novak. I am a freshman, and I'm studying electrical engineering. I am Dimitri Futris. I am a freshman as well, and I am studying computer engineering. Uh, I'm Shuv Rashudeb. I'm, uh, I'm also studying computer engineering. I'm a junior. So imagine a small country, sorry, a small village somewhere in Africa or someone in, somewhere in Bangladesh. They don't really have an energy source, but what they do have is the sun. So what we're proposing is solar-powered steam generators. They're fairly simple. They're just a parabolic mirror, a tube filled with water, and a generator. They're not too expensive and they're fairly efficient. And you can even reuse the same water if you so desire. One of these machines would be very easy for relatively untrained local villagers to operate. The major thing is the design aspect of it. Hmm. It will take a, a while to develop the correct design determining what size mirror would be needed, determining what size steam generating vessel is best, what the cost effective turbine design would be, and what other ancillary benefits you get from it. Power generation is fairly simple and straightforward, but you can also use them to be distilling units, providing not only power, but clean water as well. One of the other benefits that they'll get from the power most of these villages don't have a way to get power to them. So the benefits of the internet for education purposes. You can add that to your local schoolhouse may not have a teacher that can teach any of the complicated subjects the rest of the world has access to. But once you hook up to the internet, any one of those students can get the same education that someone in, devel in a developed country can get. One of the other aspect of this is purification of water. We can just by simply implementing a distil distillation process, the steam we're generating, we can condense it and make pure drinking water. Um, so that's another aspect of this uh, steam uh, generation is. Um, why would, p so obviously we're pitching a business idea. What, now, what, what's our benefit in it? One, we care for the society, care for those villages. And uh, I am from Bangladesh. And there are certain places where there's no power, there's no internet, there's no cell phone towers because there's no power. So uh, we can so we can go out, reach uh, uh, local governments of those villages and unions or districts, what we call, and uh, pitch our idea, pitch the product. Uh, so we make we make the product, um, and they buy. It. That's how we make money out of this, and also contribute um, towards uh, the society. Does anyone have any questions? Um, so, it's supposed to produce electricity and water also? Yes. Um, it doesn't produce water, it will clean the water. That's what I mean, sorry. Yep. Basically, once you heat up the steam, you can use that to boil water and from boiling water, once you condense it again, it won't have any of the contaminants in it. It will just be pure water. So, oh. What do you mean? After the steam has created the power, it will simply accumulate at the top of, say, a vent, and then drip downwards into a storage container as actual water. All right, the way that a steam generator works, you need a heat source, and you need, think of a tea kettle at home. It's got a spot where steam comes off the top of it. That steam travels out of a pipe, goes into a turbine, spins the turbine around, Water from the condensed steam accumulates at the bottom of the turbine, gets pumped back into the steam generator. Okay. 
they actually don't need to be that large. A 10 foot diameter parabolic mirror with a relatively small steam generator will produce enough power to rotate a turbine. It would, depends on what, how big of a generator we're talking. I would expect with this system probably a half megawatt turbine generator. Um, that's probably way too big actually. Maybe even a megawatt turbine generator. That would be enough for lights for an entire village. Just lighting alone will improve quality of life significantly. Okay, I think um, it's pretty clear you guys are engineers. You, you, you uh -huh. Really, really quick down into the dirt, right into, the, right into all of the details. I think it's a pretty neat idea, uh, particularly if you can do it cheaply enough in, mm -hmm. in third world. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's for U.S. type stuff, but it's got it's to be someplace where there's the, a, lot of, a lot of sun, a lot of third world stuff, right? Is that? Actually, the idea is from a large scale uh, generator that they're building in New Mexico right now. Yeah. It's, I want Third something world. Like a, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a 200 foot wide mirror focusing on a generator. Okay. I'm just looking at something a lot smaller sure. scale. Yeah. yeah. Good idea. Yeah. I have a question. In terms of, does adding the two part process, the power generation, and the purification, is that an unnecessary complication? One of the interesting things is once the steam leaves the turbine, that water is still very warm. Depending on how the system's designed, you can go right off of that and use that in your distillation process or have another line from the steam line going into the turbine going to the desalinization unit. It all depends on the design of it, but 15 minutes is not enough to give a good answer. Okay, good evening. Uh, I'm Marcel Cloutier. I am an electrical engineer and I'm a freshman. I'm Dylan Ross, I'm a first year freshman and I'm studying mechanical engineering. Hi, I'm Graham Elliott, and I'm a freshman mechanical engineer. Okay, so sustainable energy. It really all comes down to energy in the end, uh, all the efforts of sustainability. And we're here to tell you that there is no magic solution to getting a magic form of sustainable energy, anything which will make everyone interested suddenly in the idea of sustainability. What we are here to say is that it will take a complete revolution of the social structure of humanity in order to achieve a level of sustainability which will make our future more certain, so to speak. So what we suggest are a number of steps. For instance, in the video it said that something like 12 times the amount of money spent on research and development of sustainable energy is currently poured into the military. So if everyone would somehow agree in the name of sustainability to cut down their military, if no one has a military, then there's no need for anyone to have a military because the only reason you need a military is to defend yourself. So imagine the possibilities if you poured the money which is currently put into military and other areas which are not necessary for sustainability. The possibilities are truly endless. Furthermore, many, many people are in the dark about the, uh, the true effects of pollution and the lack of sustainable resources. I myself was a rather skeptical about the idea of sustainable energy until seeing this video. So I would suggest that a large scale education program be put in place to make people aware of the fact that the, fa the end of Earth's resources and energy are in line if sustainability is not 
achieved. Now, all of these seem like pretty big steps for humanity, but hasn't humanity always needed to adapt to survive? I would suggest that this social revolution is just the latest step which humans need in order to evolve to survive in this life. Finally, I would say as a business, you face the end of the line in practically any means of production which you have with the um, Earth's resources and sources of energy being depleted. But imagine if you are one of the forerunners in the crusade to produce sustainable energy and resources and people are fully educated about the benefits that that brings, the publicity, people would be instantly willing to try your project, products, especially if it's economical. So above all, as humans, we need to realize that sustainability is a very big issue. And it needs to be the first priority in everyone's mind. Are there any questions? I have a, let's start with, you're an advocacy group. That's, that's your core mission, correct? And you're advocating sure. sustainability. And when you're, when you're going through the process of advocating for sustainability, you're jumping from, you know, military spending is one issue, you're talking about education is another issue. Yes. How do, you, how do you propose kind of tying those two together in terms of educating the public on sustainability and at the same time as an advocacy group saying you should disband or limit your military in some capacity. How do you marry those two concepts together, education and defunding the military? Well, you could make it known that a large portion of the formerly military funds are going towards a public awareness campaign. Um, I'm not totally sure what you're asking. Well, you're, you're kind of taking uh, two huge broad topics in terms of you're, you're asking the public to become more aware of these issues around sustainability. Okay. That's, that's a huge goal in of itself. And at the same breath, you're saying to these nation states, you should also disband your military. I'm asking you, to how, how, would the, how do those two work together? Um, I would agree that it's, they are two rather unrelated topics. Um, they were two separate steps which we had come up with in order to um, further the prominence of sustainability within human society. Um, if the nations could come together and say that sustainability is a real issue for everyone around the globe, and I don't know, like the Strategic Arm Lim Arms Limitations Treaty, which the US signed with Russia, something like that, but with every nation around the globe with their military and at the same time putting those funds towards education awareness, that sort of thing, could make it one giant program. Yeah, I, I, think, I think what you're, uh, what you're really illustrating is the, uh, is the complexity of the challenge that's in front of us. Uh, it, it takes a little bit more than 15 minutes to come up with a really, really good answer. Yeah. Right? And, and particularly when, when the things are so diverse, to, to, to try and get an integrated response is, uh, it, it, it's, it's pretty difficult. So good try, though. Thank you. Hello, my name is Donnie, and I'm a freshman electrical engineering student. My name is Patrick. I am a uh, first year robotics engineering student. OK, so what really struck us about this video is that there's not really one clear solution that's going to solve everything for everyone in every place. Um, so what we want to focus on is sort of a mixture of education and sending sort of groups of people to various places to solve issues. So the idea would be to form teams of people from places that have well-educated people like universities, 
uh, first world countries that have money, that have well-educated people, um, and making teams of them and sending them places that are uh, in trouble. So, you know, the, a, a third world country with poor education or no access to resources, and then these teams, where they are sent, will sort of trying to figure out um, a specific thing for that specific place. So it's not one specific solution, but it's sort of trying to create many small solutions for many small problems at once. It kind of goes off of what the video said that education is the one non-expendable resource. And if you think about education, education is the one resource that kind of grows on itself. Using education to educate others is the one way that, is, well, it's the one resource that can actually do that. You can't create oil by using oil. So taking all of these smaller groups of educators that can bring up the levels of education worldwide, you have more people that can put their heads together to try and solve the same problems that we have today. Uh, any questions? Yeah. Any questions from the judges? No, I don't have Okay, well the idea would be um, it would have to start small uh, with, it would probably be a collaboration between universities uh, to send people maybe as like a, a service project, like we have service projects here. Uh, there's one that's going to the Dominican Republic, not quite for that purpose, but as a, like to do service there. Um, and then hopefully as it started to take effect, it could spread to uh, sort of a cooperation between universities and then just sort of a general act across countries. Any other questions? Also, more people from different backgrounds coming from different areas will have different ways of thinking about the same topics so that they'll have different viewpoints on the same things and hopefully can come up with new and unique ideas. Okay, I know you all have been here for almost three hours now, and I appreciate that, but for some of you, it's going to be well worth it. Um, can I invite the judges up here if you want to deliberate and talk about this for a couple of minutes and we'll have a, an announcement of who the winners are. I think you all did a very good job, honestly, and um, please realize that the 15 minute time limitation, it's not really to limit your answers or kind of um, kind of put you on the spot in terms of like having to rack your brain, but that's a good experience to kind of have, to kind of be put on the spot and have to think off um, the top of your head to the questions that are coming at you and be thrown with like, you know, a situation with such a vast array of problems as this movie was and kind of using the skills you have and you, in your own minds kind of think of those solutions in such a short period of time, okay? The, the two groups that really kind of stuck out to the judges here in terms of uh, approaching a problem and providing a solution that was raised in the whole movie were groups uh, directly one and four in terms of creating energy and cleaning water at the same time. Um, ultimately, the judges chose to go with group number one um, for the fact, and I, I think the fact that it came down is, um, you took kind of a thing that was mentioned in the movie, um, something on the order of that red snake, but you added a different element and kind of posed a different solution that could be added in along with the energy creation of cleaning the water as well. Is that correct, judges? That's correct. Okay. Um, congratulations to all of you. All did a really good job. I appreciate it. Thank you.